from Poland to Effingham to a U.S. citizen. This is Dive Deep. From the Diocese of Springfield in Illinois, this is Dive Deep, where we dive deep into our Catholic faith. I am Andrew Hansen coming to you from Effingham and Father Michael Rosa's home. Thanks for having us in your home, Father Rosa. You are welcome. Thanks I'm, for having me. Oh, you're, I'm loving the chocolates here. You're a big chocolate you guy. Need, you need more. I, I, I need more. <laughs> you, got, you got Heath. You got some, what is that, Italian chocolate over there? Uh, different kinds. So, <laughs> yes, How much I'm a cho- chocolate lover. You, you, have, yes. you have chocolate every day? I'm trying not to, but, you know, <laughs> temptation is strong. <laughs> temptation is strong. All right. Oh, we, we came here to Effingham to talk about your story because, again, you came from Poland all the way to Effingham. That alone, of course, is a great story we're going to get into. But as I mentioned at the top, you are now a U.S. citizen. This happened on July 7th this past summer. So let's. I want to first talk about this kind of journey to you becoming a U.S. citizen because that, of course, is rare. We love having you as a U.S. citizen, by the way. Uh, take us through this journey. I guess first things first, why did you, did you even want to become a U.S. citizen? Uh, in 2017, I incarnated to the Diocese of Springfield So then, if this is my home diocese, then also I want to be the U.S. citizen, because then if I'm living here, I don't want to be, I don't know, after 10 years, green card will expire, and then what I will do, and Bishop will have the problem. So (laughs) I don't want that. So that's why I apply for becoming U.S. citizen, and here I am. Here you are. So how long did that take? Because I know it's a process. Was this kind of like a six to eight year journey to go through everything? So that depends on the process. Like if, let's say I came from Poland. So you cannot come from Poland here without working visa, which diocese need to apply for working visa. After you are on the working visa, you can apply for green card. When you are on green card, you need to be at least five years in in my case, on working and living in United States for five years, and then you can apply for citizenship. And then, of course, the process takes some couple months or two couple years, depends on the situation. So, so 2023 <laughs> is my year. So. Is your year. What do you love about being a U.S. citizen? Uh, just the, uh, I would say the best thing To be a citizen is to be doing whatever, like, I don't need to worry that I cannot travel anywhere or I can uh, just be in different places and just freedom, the, all the things that other people do. I don't need to worry that I'm, uh, my documents expired or some other things. So, yes. So I mentioned you're you're from Poland. Um, What do you love about America that Poland doesn't have? Oh, that's so many different things. I would say probably people. How so? The smile on the faces. I would say the mentality of the people. It's much more open, much more uh, uh, happy. I would say that way because in Poland, a lot of people are very sad or not very happy from different reasons. And when I came here, I really love, especially here in Effingham, everyone is so friendly, so nice. So I would say that's what I love the most about living in the United States and living in, in Effingham. Excellent. Now, what do you love about Poland that America doesn't have, but not counting family? So what, what's something about Poland you miss that you, oh gosh, I just wish America had that. Uh, so there are some, how to say it, you can go around that. Because first thing, in the United States, you have a lot of mountains, but not in Effingham. <laughs> Very flat. So I would say what I'm missing from Poland are the mountains. Theoretically, we have beautiful mountains in the west side of United States. You have beautiful hiking trails in a lot of places, but not in Illinois. Uh, So I would say mountains and food, but the same, you can go around in Chicago, you have a lot of Polish people who you can, you can buy a lot of Polish food there. So that's what usually I am doing. I'm going to Chicago to buy some Polish food. So (laughs) I will not be missing it so much. I thought you told me once that one thing you love about America also is steak. 
Oh yeah. So we, we do steak better than Poland. Is if what you're we're saying. talking about the food, the the steaks you cannot have that kind of steak in Poland. Yes, but then the pork is better in Poland than here. So it depends. Every place has their original things. Like you have things in United States you don't have in Poland. You have things in Poland that you don't have in United States. So. So you're, you're, you're loving our steak. I, oh, yeah. I I'm, I'm chocolate lover, but I'm also the meat lover. So, yes, if you have meat, that's, that's So if, you have, if you're a father rosa for it, you just give, feed him some steak, give him chocolate for dessert, and you're, you're good to go. Um, now, getting back into the you becoming a U.S. citizen, I mean, for us of people who are born in America, I think we can take for granted some things, especially our freedom, you know, stability, especially as we mm-hmm. look around the world right now. What are some things as you went through the process that you might think that, you know, you Americans actually, you, you take this for granted because where I came from in Poland, maybe we don't have the stability or maybe government's even more corrupt or, you know, is there something about America that you think we as people who are born here take for granted? I don't know. Nothing is popping up right away, but I would say uh, we took for granted freedom for sure. That, we, that's what we have. You go to the store and you have everything. Like you want to buy, you buy. You have a lot of credit cards, all those things. Uh, in Poland right now, it's different. But I remember when I was a child, there was the times that was nothing in the store. You want to buy, you have the money, but you wasn't able to get the product because Poland uh, was in communism when I was uh, like really... Uh, small, so that that will be probably the biggest difference. Then people get used to the same roads. Here you have interstate. If I want to travel to Chicago, it will take me four hours. But you just hop on the interstate and you just driving, and you don't worry about all the like big traffic. And uh, you, when you get to Chicago, you will have it. But in Poland, you don't have that infrastructure for the roads hmm. during World War. Two, they destroy most of the infrastructure in, in Poland. So it's it's different, yes. Hmm, but, th- but even just you saying that, again, that's a reminder for us who were born here to, again, not take those things for granted. We might be getting frustrated, stuck in traffic, <laughs> but to your point, you know, our roads are much better off than, than most places around the country. Did you, growing up in Poland, is was America ever on your mind? Was that something, you know, you, maybe you didn't know you want to be a priest, which we'll get into your priestly story in a little bit, but... Um, was America something you always were like, you know, it'd be cool to live there. It'd be cool to become a citizen someday. It's like you sitting here, are you surprised that you're, are you, you're a U.S. citizen? So I never planned to be in the United States. Like I uh, always say, if someone will ask me, let's say 15 years ago, that I will be living and working in the United States, I will say, ah, oh, that's a good joke or that, that's, that's funny, maybe... But you never know what will happen. And like I said, if you are open for the Holy Spirit, then he just leads you in different places. So I never plan to, I always, uh, we watch the American movies, all the stories. So those were the things I said, oh, maybe I will go to visit to see that place. Uh, but never was thinking that I will be, living and working in unite in the United States. Yeah, it's crazy how the Holy Spirit works. Now let's get more into the Holy Spirit and let's get into your story because obviously Poland to Chicago to Effingham, that's quite the journey. But take us back to when you're a youngster in Poland. Was the priesthood on your mind? You know, we always hear the story. Sometimes we, we think uh, priests are born with a collar as they come out of the womb. Take us that, you know, did you want to be a priest as a young child or did that come later on? You know, take us to that time in your life. So... Uh, when, I, when I was in grade school, I loved to spend time in the church. So I was altar server, I was the lector, reader, uh, being very active in the church. So I have some thoughts, or I would say my vocation start growing from the youngest age. But at the same time, I don't know if I want to spend all the time in the church. You have all the other things that you like to do. I love computers, so I love to like play the games or do different things. So didn't think too much when I was in grade school. I loved, like I said, I was in the church systematically. Uh, 
growing in my faith life. In high school, I was like totally opposite. I don't want to be a priest. Mm, okay. Because, you know, that's when you start dating or you start seeing word a little different. But then the I would say the God's call is in you. If God wants you to do and you are open for it, then... I just, after high school, I said, okay, God, if you really want me, because it's something in you, then I just started the seminary mm. and I finished. And then I uh, was uh, working in the parishes in Poland. And then uh, my sister came to United States before me and I want to visit her. So then I come to visit, but as priest, I want to also celebrate Mass. So I start visiting the churches in Chicago and the priest says, oh, we would like you to help us here. I said, no, that's the totally different story because then I uh, swear obedience to my bishop so I can just say, okay, I'm going and I will be working here. It's just all the process. But I said, you know what? You never know what Holy Spirit wants. If, you, if God wants me to work here, I will be here and here I am. So. so there's a little bit more to that story. So basically your sister's in Chicago, you're, you're visiting her and uh -huh. you're maybe saying some masses going back and forth to Poland. But to your point, then the seed planted, well, maybe I become a priest in America, but this is where you met our Bishop Thomas John Paprocki. He was in he Chicago. Was in Chicago. Yes. Uh -huh. So take us to that moment. <laughs> did, did he approach you? Did you approach him saying like, hey, actually I wouldn't mind being a priest here. And what was that conversation like? Uh, I, I can't. Tell all the details because I don't remember all the things. But I was working at Saint Fra uh, Saint Ferdinand Parish in Chicago, and Bishop Aproki visiting there the parish there. So I would say that's where our uh, connection started. And then uh, when he moved here, he need the priests here to work, and that's how I'm here. He ask my bishop or whatever it is, like my bishop or this, it's like complicated. Okay, but nonetheless, asking, nonetheless, yes. you're here. Um, what was it like when you, when he even approached you or even thought about, wait, I'm going to move from, my whole life is Poland. I know Poland, you know, the English language, you know, there's barriers, there's culture, all that sort of stuff. Was it tough to say yes to come to America or was it an easy decision? Take us in your brain for that moment. So first, when I came to United States, like I said, I was first just coming for vacation. Then when I came to work in Chicago, I was working with Polish community. So I didn't use too much English. And then when Bishop said, I would like you to be parochial vicar in Effingham, I said, where is Effingham? <laughs> <laughs> but then I was really afraid that my English was not good enough, and it's still not. But uh, right now, if I ask some parishioners from here, from around, they will say, oh, I went a long journey from when I came here in 2014 to the place where I'm now with my English. And yeah, you are always scared about different things. But like I said, God will take care of you if you just close to him. And what, what did you find um, when you came here? Were you, and again, you, I know you had some, some touch points in Chicago going back and forth, and, and then you became obviously permanently here in Effingham. But when you compare Catholicism in America versus Catholicism in Poland, you know, we always hear Poland is arguably one of the last kind of bastions of, of Catholicism. Unfortunately, that's kind of waning here, especially in, in most more recent years. But did anything strike you about Catholicism here in America versus what you were used to in Poland? So for sure, uh, Poland, when I was living, was, I don't know what, what, how the statistics look like, looks like right now, but it was like 95% of the Polish people are Catholic. So that makes huge difference when we come in here and then you have maybe 20% in, if it's really good statistic of the, all the people who live, you have a lot of Christians, you have a lot of different denominations. So that makes huge difference for the amount of the people. You meet people on the street or other stuff and you don't know. In Poland, you will say, you assume that all the people are Catholics in Poland. When here, 
you don't know, but at the same time, like you, uh, like I said at the beginning, people are very nice, very friendly. So then you just go with the flow. Like I said, my first mass when I came here was at St. Anthony and it was Saturday evening. And I said, oh, okay, we are in the United States. So it will be just a couple people will probably come Saturday evening for the mass. And then I'm going to the church and the church is like full. And I said, hmm. It will be hard with my English at that point, but and is that because uh, Polish are still they're more more traditionally minded? So mass is on Sunday, whereas in America yes, yes. we, we kind of uh-huh. Saturday is a big deal. Okay. So that like I didn't expect that. Right. So that that's one of the memory that I have here of Effingham Saturday evening, and I was shocked. <laughs> Can you take us when you officially moved here to Effingham and you're you're pulling you know probably down I fifty seven and pulling in, pulling into town? What's going through your mind? Are you like holy cow? What is going on in my life? Or are you excited? Are you nervous? Probably both. Um, are you like I don't know how long I'm even going to be here? Maybe maybe this is just two years and I'll be I'll go back to Poland. Can you remember that day? I don't remember all the details, but this, yes, when I uh, when Bishop sent me the letter with the appointment for Effingham. I didn't really know for how long I will be here. But I said, at least I will learn English. I will learn more American culture. I will know more. Uh, and then, I, like I said, I don't recall all this, the things. For sure, I was like nervous. I don't know anyone. That's true. I'm coming to Effingham. I contacted the pastor. I contacted the people here, but I, I would say only one, only people that I knew at this time was priests. And then you're coming in and you don't know what will be the reaction of the people who is here. But I would say probably that's the priest reality, because if I will be, if Bishop will move me from this place to another parish, I will go to another parish that I don't know anyone. And then you need to start uh, learn, like start knowing people, doing different things. So, uh, like I said, with God's help, we can handle everything. So <laughs> I just go one day at a time and then learning more. And like I said, my English wasn't great and it's still not, but... Uh, so, so there was in, in that in that moment you of course you didn't know you were going to be here permanently, let alone become mm-hmm. a U.S. citizen. So you're thinking we'll see kind of how long this lasts, maybe. If people will accept me, okay. if people will be understanding me, because that's my biggest concern was that I would like to preach the gospel, but if my English is not good enough, people will complain, okay, I can't understand what you are saying. I don't know what you are talking about or different things. And at the beginning, it was that way, especially uh, some people with the uh, hearing disabilities or, or different things. They said, oh, Father, I can't hear you. I can understand you when we are talking, but when you are there from the pulpit, I can't understand. So I start taking the English classes, start learning English more and more. So, Well, I think your, your English is, is phenomenal. You've done a tremendous job. Now, you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, you were surprised at the friendliness of people in America versus mm-hmm. back home. Is that something that put you at ease? Okay, that first mass, okay, you mentioned that there might be a little bit of a language barrier, but were you surprised at how welcoming people were? And did that just warm your heart in, in, in a sense? Yes, I remember that... My first word was, I don't know, I don't remember what I said, but I was like scared to death. (laughs) And then I said, guys, I will try to do my best. And I was just preaching. I don't remember when I was preaching, but I remember that on the end of mass, uh, on the end of homily, I get the applause from the people in the church. So I said, okay, maybe it will not be that bad. So (laughs) were you surprised? I'm sure they don't applaud for homilies in Poland. No, no, normally they, they don't, okay. <laughs> but then it was like, like g- nice surprise. Yeah. It was and, like, welcome. We're like, so glad welcome, you're here. Welcome. Excellent. What, what's one aspect of Polish culture or Polish Catholicism you'd like to see in America? I would like to see more people t- 
taking more serious Sunday obligation. Right now, like our churches are not empty, but a lot of people see, okay, uh, Sunday, oh no, I have sports, I have other activities, and they put that in front of Sunday obligation. I would like really that more people will come on Sunday to the church and really praise God, worship him and be with him, spend time with him. Because like I always say, with whom you spend time, that who you become. If you spend more time with God, then you can be a better person when you are here in the church and being close to God. You know, and I always hear, you know, we do have we do have many Polish priests in our diocese. If you go to a neighboring diocese, there's usually Polish priests. W- what is it about Poland that can seem to produce vocations? What what are you guys doing over there? Does it start in the family? And, and is that something that us in Americans, you know, our American families not doing something that Polish families are doing? Or, you know, when you look at that, you know, you guys can supply us with priests, yet we have what? I don't know, 10 times the population or whatever it is of Poland. So what, what's going on in Poland that America isn't doing when it comes to vocations or when it comes to Catholicism and faith? I don't know the answer for that question. I think like right now, a lot of people spend much more time in front of TV or in front of the phones than in the church. Maybe that was that we have more devotions in the church. For example, now is October. It's the month of the rosary. Uh, In Poland, every evening you have the rosary in the church going on. Uh, We are doing here at Sacred Heart decade of the rosary 10 minutes before mass starts. But the difference is like people will come here uh, with sometimes joking that when mass is at 1030, at 1025, the church is still empty. And then one or two minutes before mass, everyone is coming in. Like everything is like last minute. When in Poland, I remember from my childhood, we didn't come like last minute to the church. Mass is at 10.30 and we come 10.29. We always come early to the church, even if nothing was going on, but you have time to pray, to to talk to God. Uh, For vocation perspective, it's just, I really don't know, there is no like golden rule. We will do this, this, and this, and then vocation will pop up. I would say that's just example that's, uh, time in the church that people spend and uh, we hope that the families, the, the kids will also see that the priesthood is not something, okay, father is always sitting in the church and uh, doing nothing else just in the church. Like a couple of times I, I'm in the school or something and or biking and kids will say, oh, father, I don't see you in your priest uh, vestments or, or a priest priest shirt and oh you you are like normal person, yeah, person. I, I think <laughs> like the difference is like here the younger generation don't see priest as the same like normal person who who is doing different things if i said to the the kids in school i have playstation 5 and i'm playing the games they were like wow <laughs> priest is doing this it's not only, sure, we're praying, we're doing things, but we're doing other stuff. And that's how I see, like, when I'm thinking about my childhood, I always, like, in my home parish was 11 priests wow. at some point. Wow. Pastor and parochial vicars. Uh, and then we always have different priests. And th- this priest was doing this, this was doing this. And you always see them not only in the church, but they were also doing different things with us, and that was just fun. You're just a guy who wants to play video games, eat some chocolate, and have some steak. I mean, just like all of us, Father Rosa. Come on. See? <laughs> um, now, I, I want to get right, can I just a couple more questions. You know, I still think back to your journey and you saying yes, you know, even considering this. I, that just seems courageous because, again, I mean, you, you grew up, you're thinking, I'm going to be a priest in Poland. I know Polish, my family's here, my friend's yes. here, you know, everything, this is this where my comfort is. Then obviously you get this invitation, again, and you're not going to Chicago, and okay, I'm familiar with Chicago, you're not going to Chicago, you're going to Effingham, where again, where you know no one, middle of nowhere, not Polish at all, you know, you don't, you know, you mentioned the language, the culture. When you look back, 
what do you think even gave you the courage to even say yes to that? Because obviously, I mean, how many priests from Poland are still saying, yep, sign me up. I'm, I'm out the door. Get me to America. I'm sure not many. And yet you said yes to despite all of that stuff that is really hard. I would say that one of the reasons was my sister here. Because I would say if not her, I would probably not be in the United States. Because I started visiting her just to, to see. I have only one sister. So maybe that was the, the reason. The same thing. Like English is the language that sounds, how to say it, nice. Like I like the sound of the English. It's different than British English. American English is, I don't know, nice. And I love to learn it. So that was also like when I decided to go to Effingham, I said, that will put me in the deep water because I will not be able to speak with anyone Polish. Sure, I can call uh, my sister or some other people in Chicago and talk with them in Polish. But here, that's the best way to learn how to do things because I will not have other opportunities. And like I said, in the, at the beginning, I would say probably 60% of the words, I understand what, what people talk to me. So that was hard. Like, they said something and I said, okay, uh, could you say it again hmm. so I can understand what you're saying? And so it wasn't easy, but at the same time I said, that's, that's our journey. And right. what's, just, uh, what, what's, been your, what's been your favorite thing about being a priest here at Sacred Heart? You were at St. Anthony. I mean, I know you took students to World Youth Day. Mm -hmm. You've been at St. Anthony School, now at Sacred Heart School. What, when you look back on your time so far in America and your priestly life, tell us some things that you've just, boy, I never thought I, I would be able to do this or, or I've enjoyed this more than I thought I would. So I never thought that I would be renovating the church the first year <laughs> when I uh, became pastor because we did the huge renovation here at Sacred Heart. Uh, and there's plenty of different things that I would say, I never thought that I would took the group to World Youth Day. It wasn't never on like, okay, no, now we're going. It was just situation that was opportunity. People say, want to go. Like this year I went to Poland on the pilgrimage because people say, oh, we would like to see Poland. We would like to see more, uh, more things about you. And uh, right now we were talking, okay, now let's go to Holy Land. But now it's, uh, we will see how the things will go. Uh, but I would say, as the priest, I always love when we have uh, people who are praying and you can see their faith. Like, when we have COVID and then closed was, churches were closed, and then we opened the churches and people start coming, and then people were able to receive communion after, I don't know for how long was that, that period, that was something that like you see the, the tears in the eyes of the people. That was something like amazing experience. Uh, always love when people come to confession and sometimes people come after 20 years and they will say whatever. Now they decided what's the reason, but now they are close to God. Now they can participate in the sacraments. Those are the like the priest things that, that really like help us to do things because you have everyday things like someone come with that problem or other things or this is not working something in school is uh, broken we need to fix it there is always something but at the same time you have the different situations that help you to like stay close to god and say okay yes that's i i still want to be a priest and i still want to keep going Father Rosa will get you out on this one. So when you look back on your journey, you mentioned, geez, even in high school, you kind of even went away from the faith. Not only did you become a not priest. Not from the faith, not from, from the, the priesthood. From the priesthood. There you go. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me. From the priesthood. Then you become a priest. Then all of a sudden you're in America. <laughs> then all of a sudden you become a U.S. citizen. I mean, this is crazy talk, right? But yet here we are. Mm -hmm. When you look back over all this, what goes through your mind? It's just... God's plan. 
<laughs> I would say God has the plan that I'm here. Like I said, if someone will ask me 20 years ago, I even didn't, didn't know that Effingham exists. But I will say, like, I don't know what the future will bring. I'm always open for God's guidance. And it's just, yeah, adventure with Jesus through life. Yes, that's something that, that you can't even plan that kind of things. <laughs> I love that, an adventure with Jesus. Father Rosa, great way to end it. We are so pumped that you became a US, U.S. citizen, and even more so you're here in our diocese. Thank you for all that you do, and congratulations again on everything. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. This has been Dive Deep. For more podcasts, head over to dio.org slash podcast. And until next time, we'll see you right here on Dive Deep. <laughs>